Hello, good afternoon. We are back. We don't have our little guest artist that we've had the last couple of days. If anybody was around to paint with, my grandkids, Nathan and Caitlin, they have gone back home. And so we have Caden here today, which he'll be in in just a minute. He's my best cameraman ever. Anyway, so we are going to do hummingbirds today. I'm excited. So I will draw it out with you and then we'll watercolor. This is also a good one. We always use Sharpie to draw with because I like to teach um, courage when it comes to drawing and not thinking we have to erase everything. But this is a good one too for especially grown-ups, kids too. I never like to like separate kids from grown-ups when it comes to art because kids are amazing. But anyways, if you want to use a pencil like we did the other day, what do we do? Popsicles. If you want to use a pencil to outline with rather than a sharpie um, and then when it's dry when your paint's dry you can erase the lines so it'll be a really pretty one so we're going to do um, a couple hummingbirds and we'll watercolor together and then we'll go on and, and do whatever else we got going on today thank you for joining us if this is your first time say hello um, tell me it's your first time and a lot of times you watch and don't ever say anything but i'd love to hear from you it also helps Facebook know that I am sharing good content. When people like and share, comment, that helps it reach more people and show other people what I'm doing. So it's great when it grows. I appreciate it so much. I've been having so much fun with you guys on painting, so I don't know who's around today. But say hello and we will um, get painting together. All right, Kaden, you can have your seat. Whoops. Yeah, that needs plugged in because I about drained it. All right. JC and Kenzie are here. We're back ready. Oh, you missed yesterday. I noticed. I noticed you weren't here yesterday. So we missed you too. We did robots. So I didn't know. Um, actually, we did robots. We even sang happy birthday to... We'll do that one last. We sang happy birthday to... Mackenzie was um, the day before they commented at the very end that it was her birthday and I missed it before I shut that off so um, so there's a birthday song on yesterday's too but anyways welcome hang on here here Kaden why'd you move them here let me do this I had to refresh it okay here hang on. can I do this because you're taking it thank you that's not where I want them. Hang on here just a second. I'm gonna get this computer back to where we need it. All right, so anyways, um, Roseanne, welcome. Your daughter's ready, all right. So anyways, this one is, Caden likes to watch the video part of it and I put these pictures in front of the screen. But anyways, it's okay. It's a distraction anyways. All right, so, all right, so we got, I had my last, this time I really think this is my last sheet of watercolor paper. Um, I have some ordered so and we have our sharpie so we're gonna get started with this um, we're gonna have some flowers kind of on the left side is where I'm gonna do mine I don't know why I think it must be because I'm right-handed but I feel like everything always faces a certain direction I don't know I guess it's just easier for me to draw it's just weird how your mind thinks but anyway, so I'm gonna save the whole left side down here to put some flowers and vine looking things. And I'm gonna, I think because I have such a big sheet of paper, I'm gonna do two hummingbirds. So I'm gonna do one up a little higher and one a little lower. Okay, so we ready to get started. Hey, Sheila. All right, so with my, Katie's using a little finer point pen. Oh, you got so he's got the little itty bitty, which it would be good for the really ultra fine point pen for this. But if I use that or if I use pencil, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. And I don't know. Is the pencil over there? I don't, I'm not going to do pencil. But anyways, this will be beautiful with pencil. Actually, let me, I'm trying to think how to do this because watercolor, I have that cardstock stuff and watercolor does not work on cardstock. I'm gonna draw with a Sharpie on this, and then I'm gonna draw it again on the 
on the watercolor paper with pencil. And then we'll watercolor, maybe. No, I'm not gonna do that. That'll give you too much time, or not you too much time, it just makes me take too long. A lot of dead time. Okay, we'll get going here. I can make up my mind. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna start with, with the beak, and since I have a Sharpie, um, that's a little bit thicker. I'm not gonna do really two lines. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come, I'm in the top half of my paper and about a, a little over to the left. So all I'm gonna make is a slight, a long line with a slight curve, okay? Now, we want a uh, hummingbird has a very, very narrow, narrow beak. So that's important not to let it get too thick, okay? so you. Kids that are doing this think about really thin, so it's almost like I'm going to touch the first line with my second line. I want to come right to the peak, the point, and I'm just doing another line, so it's really thin. So there's hardly any gap in there at all. Okay, and it's about the length of like from my knuckle down to the tip of my finger. Don't look at my fingernails, you guys. This is my disclaimer. For when people are watching this in the COVID-19 and the coronavirus or quarantine time or whatever we want to call it is over with. The only reason my fingernails are so stinking long is because I can't get them done. So they really are bugging me. All right, so we got the beak. So now we're going to do the shape of the head. It's almost a square shape or a diamond shape because it's not square in the upright position. So the beak is where one corner is. So I'm gonna come up, just a little bit up, okay? And then I wanna come a down and a curve around and I'm gonna come down to over here. So that's two sides of my square. It's tilted, so like if my square was set and flat, it would be this way and it's going this way. All right, so now below the beak, I'm gonna come down just like the top and I'm gonna come over to a there and I'm gonna curve around um, and you don't we could put a line in here the drawing I'm looking at a drawing of somebody else's there could be a line in there but I'm gonna leave that out so it's almost like a square but we're gonna leave this side off okay so now I want to come down that way we don't have a black line right through the head or the neck okay so now I'm gonna make a little curve out and I'm gonna go directly to the right side of my paper. This is the wing that's closest to us. So I'm gonna slightly slope up and just right back down. So it's about twice the width of the head, about twice as long as the space we use for the head. All right, so now I'm gonna come down to the line where we stopped under the head. And I'm gonna come right off that line and I'm gonna curve in just a little bit, not very far. Right now he looks like he's gonna be a super big bird, but he's not when we get it all done. Okay, I'm gonna jump back up, so we got this. I'm gonna jump back up to our wing here. This was like the top of the wing. I guess I should have finished that first. Okay, so back where we have our curve down, we're gonna leave a little bit of a space, just a little bit, about the width of a pencil. We're going to make a line going down just a little ways and then we're going to make a little squiggly line going all the way out to the tip. So a little squiggly line going all the way out and I connect it onto the end of that line. Is this making sense, Kaden? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not going to do the lines for the feathers in this because I want to do it more with watercolor, but you could. Um, well, actually, you know what? I will do it. Okay, since we are doing what? Or a pen. So I'm going to do a second line coming down this. So I went a second line right down inside that wing. And then you can do the little angle lines for the feather separations if you want to. You like the feather lines in it, Kaden? Does that help? Oops, I just got a sharp on my arm. Okay, so now we're gonna come back to the tummy part. Okay, so where we ended up, now I wanna curve the other way, and I wanna curve, and it's gonna, my line's gonna point down towards the bottom left corner on my paper. Not very long, but I'm gonna curve around, and I'm gonna point it right down there, okay? 
So I curved out for the tummy and then I curve in. And then at the end of this point, I'm gonna take this line and I'm gonna come right up to the wing. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the tail feathers right here on the end of it. If you've ever watched hummingbirds, it's time, you guys, if you haven't got your hummingbird food out, it's time, it should be out by now. I need to get mine out and get my feeders back up. But they, when they're getting their nectar, they curl their bodies under this way. So I went ahead and did the tail. I came out from this end and I did my little wiggly line and then I'm gonna come right back up. I'm gonna connect it right onto the back of the body right there. Okay, so now all we have left is we need to put, well, two things, but we're gonna come over here. We're gonna put the far wing coming out and it won't go as long as this one that's closer to us because it's on the back side of the body, the farthest part away. So it's the angle of it makes it look shorter even though they'd be the same length, but we don't want it to be as long. So I curve up above the swing and I just kind of end it, put the end of it on like that one too. So now I got the wing that's close and then I got the wing that's farthest away. Now you guys can also put lines if you want to in the little tail feathers. If you want it in there, I guess if you wanted to do the other wing, you could like that. Okay, so the eye is going to be right at the end. I don't know. My shape of my head is a little weird. I, I don't even know if I want an eye on there because it doesn't look like it's in the right spot. But anyways, Okay, so little itty bitty feet. They keep their little feet curled right up to their tummy. So I'm just gonna do a little wiggly, um, let me show you bigger, because I know this is far away. So the feet, I'm just doing like two little ovals that are super close together. Okay, that's what I did. Teeny, that was one foot and another one. And since my, since my Sharpie's getting so spread, kind of, fatter on the tip so it's harder to get really small lines. All right, so let's do some flowers uh, for this, this little hummingbird guy to be getting some nectar out of. So at the end of his beak, I'm just gonna make a squiggly line going curving that way. And then I'm gonna curve around the other way with a squiggly line. And I just stop behind the beak and I pause and then I can do those side. It's like a trumpet type flower. They like those trumpety shaped flowers. I don't know what it is, but we can have it be whatever. But anyway, so now I brought in both sides of this. My Sharpie's getting a little flat here. It's gotta have something to hook into. Box glove, I don't know. And you could do, I mean, you could have several of these kinds of flowers going, hanging here. So let me do the flower again so you can kind of see how I'm doing this. So I have, these are going to be attached on a vine. Okay. Okay, let me do another one for you. So I'm going to, so when I did it from the beak of the hummingbird, I started with the beak. But what you can do is you can just do a line going up slightly out on both ways. And then you can curve in and curve out put an end on it and then I put some leaves or the stem part of this flower to kind of hold it on there. Okay and then we can add some leaves however you want. Going up and down this vine. All right, you guys ready to try another hummingbird? Tell me, I'll wait for a thumbs up because I'm going to do another one. So I want to make sure I'm not getting too far ahead of anybody. But when I see your thumbs up, then I'll paint another hummingbird, okay? Or draw another hummingbird. 
I'm just going to keep adding to my flowers until I see you guys are ready. And if anybody else has joined in and is watching and didn't say hello, I'd love to oh, hear. More. You got a thumbs up, Caden? I don't know who's all painting. Who's painting today? I know there's a couple, couple of you on here painting today, drawing. I'll wait just another minute. It's hard to like break away from feeling like everything has to be exactly how it's supposed to be like the things we see in nature like a photo you know like our flowers have to be a real kind of flower or whatever it's t at least for me it's taken me a long time to realize you know what I can make up my own flowers my own it doesn't have to be exactly hey Erin how are you I've missed you I hope you guys are doing well painting hummingbirds today but anyways we can create our own worlds because God created us to be creators and so we can we have full permission from the Father from our God to create our own worlds on paper or wherever in our gardens and all the landscape and stuff so okay you guys ready We're, I'm gonna do another hummingbird so I'm gonna do kind of the same but this one's going to be, whoops, sorry, you need that one? No, you're fine. You doing that one again? Here, hang on, let me just move this. I'll just move this. Okay. So, I'm going to do another hummingbird. And this is just going to be a little bit different, but we'll do the same um, process here. So, I got my, my beak. This one's going to be in this flower. So long, thin lines, when I do the second line, I pretty much touch the first line because you don't want your beaks to be really wide. They're like needles. Hey, Donna, how are you? I want to do, Donna, speaking of, uh, I do want to do this in acrylic too. So I probably will have an acrylic painting class Saturday morning. I think it's supposed to be raining Saturday morning, so it'll be a good good day for painting when we can't really be outside but anyways I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get stuff scheduled but anyways um good that's good to hear so I will have something probably for acrylic classes on Sunday morning or not Sunday morning Saturday morning okay so now the head of this hummingbird so remember we kind of make it it's almost like a square shape but I'm going to go a curve up and then I'm going to come down And then I'm going to just bring this one down this way so it's almost parallel line to the back side of his head. Okay, so this time I'm going to just go ahead and come down and I'm going to curve, make the belly. And then I'm going to, this one's tail is not coming forward like this one is, okay? Alright, so now I want to bring the back down and I'm going to connect it right onto the tip of this. So there's his tail. This one's got his tail all close to the, together. This one, the way he's flying, I think it's more spread out. Okay, so now a wing, the closest wing to us, is gonna go out more downward, not so much straight out. And then, I guess the wing would kind of be on the body here. These will be beautiful if you guys want to try these again with pencil and erase your pencil after your watercolor. Then you won't have, I mean, I love the, the ink and the watercolor look and technique, but sometimes it's nice to just have the watercolor, okay? So there's the other one. Um, I'm ready to paint here. I didn't. Let me not 
skip through these feather lines. I kind of made them look really sloppy. I was dreaming of doing it with pencil where I didn't see my lines. I'm going to make the tail down here just a little spread out, but not a lot. Okay, and I don't even, I'm not going to do any of the little feet on this one. All right, you guys ready to paint? I feel like I need a few more leaves here. Our classes have been going fast the last couple days. I feel like I need to hang out a little bit longer with you guys. We were doing like an hour long classes there for a while and then the last few have been only barely over 30 minutes. All right, well, I'm gonna show you some fun stuff with watercolor. Um, on this. I was looking to see if I wanted to maybe add some other flowers, but I don't think I'm going to. Okay, so I will use, um, I'm going to use my smaller, smallest brush that I have here for this. Are you ready to paint or do you want me to wait? You good? Okay. All right, so ruby throats are what we have around here. The male is the one with the ruby throat. The female does not have the ruby throat on her neck. And they have just all these beautiful iridescent colors. So I am going to mix. Do you, are you still looking at that drawing or can I move this over? Okay, I just want to kind of see what my screen's showing me that you guys are seeing. I could come like this over here. There we go. Okay, sorry, I like to see what you guys are seeing to make sure that it's making sense here. So I picked up my hot pink and I also dipped in my orange, my hot orange, my red orange. That's what I was looking to see if you guys could see my paints and you can't. So, this, my favorite part of the watercolor, I think this is why I like watercolor so much, is when you start getting to just let the colors blend and do their thing. So I will start out by getting my paper wet. Now I'm going to try not to touch my water to that ruby color that I just did and just paint the whole body with water. I'm not letting it puddle. I'm keeping it pretty thin. I'm going to start with my turquoise blue here. I'm just going to paint down the back of my hummingbird with this turquoise blue color. Okay. Now I want to get my yellow. Because yellow and blue makes green. up and see if there's some in there. So depending on how much green you use and how much or how much yellow you use and how much blue you use on um, what your colors are going to end up being. How much the shades of your colors will be. I'm going to take I like all the colors. I'm going to take some of my purple and do towards the end. I am not looking at a real hummingbird. This is where, again, we get to create. We get to be little creators and just kind of go with what we like. Are you kids that are doing this? You guys doing good? I don't know what color their wings should be, but I want some purple on mine. Has anybody seen hummingbirds yet this year? I bet I would soon if I got my, I gotta get my feeder water up. I'm gonna do that when we're done here. I make my own sugar water. One part water and four parts, or one part sugar, four parts water is what I do. I guess when it's time for them to like leave, um, 
you up your sugar because they need extra sugar. The dryer was on, wasn't it? Now it's off, I guess. Just now noticed it. It's funny how you don't notice noise until it stops. All right, so there's one hummingbird. I have a teeny bit of the beak that I can see. Just a little bit. Trying to put a little color in there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take some yellow. red because I know yellow and red when they touch will make kind of an orange color. I like that one. He's pretty. All right, so let's do, I feel like they both need to be ruby throat, so I just think they're so pretty. I guess we could have two male. I think I hear, do you hear the little chirp? That's what hummingbirds sound like. I wonder if they're out there, but I don't have any Just, yeah, well, I'm not going to right this minute, but yes, I wonder if they're out there. It's so fascinating when you read about hummingbirds. We've read about them a lot because we get them here and how they will come back and where they go to South America and then they will come back to where they were born. It's just amazing. And the flight that they take um, to get here and little itty bitty birds. The first year we lived here, Caden had them named, right? We had, we had one little female, and then she, we know she had babies because we had a little male that just had his little ruby throat. It was just one little dot, a little red dot, looked like a little ruby, just an actual one gem on his neck. And then, so I looked that up and that was just a juvenile male um, hummingbird. And they can have a couple, uh, whatever you, would you call them broods hatchlings I don't know but anyways they can have a couple of them in a season so I see some some emojis popping up. Are you guys around? You guys doing good? If you just joined and you're just watching, seeing what's going on, welcome. I do um, daily drawing and paint watercolor classes. I've been doing them since we've been quarantined, which seems like it's been quite a while. I'm getting used to it. I kind of like it, only because I don't have to go somewhere else usually anyways, unless it's grocery shopping, which I did that already today, so I should be good to be at home. I'm a home person. I am not an introvert, but I am a home buddy. I love being at home. I love um, whoops, you know what, oh, I thought I was like messing up my painting of my robot from yesterday. It's getting it all wet with my paper towel. Oh, no, it's not your fault. But I just like to be home. I, 
like the slower lifestyle. I think it's just because I've just, all my life, raising kids and going and doing, it's like, man, I think I needed this break for a little while. been good for me. Caden misses his friends though. He'll probably be starting baseball up once things get hopefully back to normal. He should. We've got a baseball team waiting ready to go. Hopefully we get to do I love baseball. I love watching my kids play baseball. A little bit in this beak. Gonna come back and watch this with Annalise. All right, Brianna, be sure and share your picture when you guys get done. All right, so now I'm gonna do my flowers here. So I wanna show you on the outside. So I'm just picking one of these flowers and painting it wet, or painting it with water first, getting it wet. That's pretty, Kaden. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm gonna see. Can you guys see his? Are you done? Yeah. Just, what about your beak? Your beak? I think your beak. Do means, I um, I do kind of a yellowy golden color. Okay. And your little hummingbird toes. Good job. I like them. Okay, so I got my flower wet, and I'm gonna put my brush down at the base of where the Flowers coming out of the little stem there. And just letting that water just grow right up my flower. And then I'll take some of this lighter purple. I'm doing purple up here. Okay, so inside I want it darker. Awesome, Kaden, you're so talented. Thank you, Lori. She said you were talented. Can you say thank you too? You can talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, dude. Mm -hmm. I'll see ya. A little bit. Alright, so I just put, so I made it dark inside, so these flowers are kind of like trumpet shaped. So inside, closest to the center is where my paint's darker because that's kind of a shadow there. Now, if you want to add white in with it, you can. I always forget to use white paint. I don't know why. I use white paint all the time when we do acrylic, but not so much when I'm watercolor. a little pink into my purple and it changes up the color of my flower a little bit. Because in my garden you can have all the different color flowers. This one got a little wet. To show you a little bit of the green and then I'll paint some more flowers here in a minute. So when I do my green, let me just go ahead and paint yellow first. So I'm going to start with this bottom flower or this bottom leaf and I'm going to paint it yellow. But to make it green, I'm gonna put purple in it instead of blue, okay? This blue-violet, it's kind of a blue-violet. It just makes it a little bit more of an earthy green than a 
I think I'll need some blue too because it's almost too dark. So I am going to put some of this turquoise blue in here. Between the three of them, and also because this is still so wet, I can go ahead and mix it right on this leaf. I'm trying to get more of a spring green color rather than a really bright Kelly green is what I call it. Let's see, okay. And then when I've mixed it, I usually have that color on my paintbrush for just a little bit, so I don't have to keep mixing it. Places that you want darker, you can put your, put your purple on the, the little uh, stem line in the middle. And this is okay on this one to let it blend together as it bleeds together. I think maybe, I think why maybe I like a, acrylic paint, maybe I like watercolor. The thing I don't like about watercolor is waiting for it to dry. Already I have a hard enough time being patient when I do acrylic paint and acrylic dries pretty quick. But watercolor, sometimes you have to, to be able to do more colors. You have to wait for it to dry and it's like, I don't, want to wait because if you rush it then all your colors will bleed together maybe when you don't want them to I know it's just something that I as I get used to doing it more then I'd be more uh, I know what I know what I would know better what it's capable of doing He's so quiet when he paints. Now he's outside making all the noises. Caden loves noise. He creates noise because that's what he was, I believe, created to do was to make noise. Yeah, well, he he found a really, really, really big snake. A big snake? Yeah. Like, like how big? Does he have it or does he just have it? He's watching it. people online. Don't tell people where the snake is. Is it by the back door? Huh? Okay, don't bring it in here to show it to me, okay? Anybody else have snakes where you live? What are you doing? Getting a fork? What are you getting? Do you not use anything in the kitchen to mess with a snake? Chopsticks. Chopsticks? Okay, well don't... Okay, whatever. I figured they'd be out. I've been doing gardening and yard work and I know that it's they're around, which are okay. They're just black snakes. But it's always a little disturbing when you come up on them. Okay, don't run it off. I'll be there in a minute. Did I just lose everybody now? You're like, I ain't painting with this lady. She's crazy. She talks about snakes in her classes.
doing good. I've got one more flower here to paint and then I'm going to zip all my green on. Maybe I'll get this one finished for you today. And then you guys make sure you share your paintings with me. I love seeing Lori and Kinsey and JC. I love seeing your paintings when you guys share them. So anybody else, who else did we, um, Roseanne, um, your daughter, I'd love to see her picture. You can post it in the comments after we're all done if you want to. All right, I'm going to turn my paper over so I can get the green on this side. How many shades of green can you make when you mix them? You can make a lot. That's why I love mixing colors rather than having them already made up. Because especially green, it pulls you into making your own shades of green. And it's just so fun. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear my sign out, my son outside. Anybody watching? So peaceful outside right now. All right, I think I about got this one done. You're still here, loving Caden's annex. I know he's entertaining. Yeah, for sure. He keeps me entertained. All right, now I wanted to do, now this is what I don't know that much about. But we're gonna see, I'll be the guinea pig for this. So I get a little bit bigger brush and I'm just putting some, I just wanna drip some water. It's kind of dirty water. But I wanna just put some, maybe I'll do it like this. I know how to splatter paint when we do acrylic. Well, we'll see what happens when it dries. It may look better when it dries. But I just splatter some colors over this. Makes it look a little garden-like. Um, I think I'll add some looser colors. Let me grab my bigger brush here. I have not used the, I don't usually use this big brush. I need clean water though for this. I would suggest if you're gonna do stuff like this to get clean water. It just um I think would just let some of these colors come together, do their thing. I'm gonna let it drip. Let's see what happens if it drips. I think it'll look different when it dries. I hope I didn't just mess this up. But anyways, I just wanted to play around. So if you guys want to play around like that too, you can. Right. 
So there is my painting for today. I hope you guys um, enjoyed this. I sure did. And we will be back tomorrow. And I don't remember what's on the lineup for tomorrow, but I will um, be back to paint with you guys for sure. I know on Friday we're doing dogs. So if you guys, I know, um, is it Kinsey that you wanted a beagle? I think we're gonna do like a beagle. So if you guys have a couple other breeds of dogs, I won't be able to do too many. Um, but if you ever breed a dog, you know, I can maybe do four or five different breeds of dogs. We'll probably just do like the heads or the faces. So that I know that's on Friday. I guess tomorrow's mystery day because I can't think what tomorrow's is. But whatever it is, I will be back to paint with you tomorrow. And you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna, I got so many different things I need to do today. Part of it is I'd like to do some yard work again before it rains, but I don't know, we'll see. But anyways, thanks for hanging out. Share your pictures when you're done, I love seeing them. I hope you enjoyed this one, it was a lot of fun for me. And um, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great afternoon.